Okay, I have two children under the age of two. <laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you. She look a good. <laughs> uh, really, I'm just bragging because I made it here tonight. You know what I mean? So, I made it out of the house on stage here in makeup. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is my Coachella. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna fucking rage. All right. Cheers. We did it. Uh, any tired parents here tonight? Okay, you were my people. You were my people. I'm amongst friends. Oh, I'm tired. Like I said, I got two under two. I am so tired. I am so... She go, did you say I am too? Or I, okay, I thought she said I'm sorry. Both would be appropriate answers. Both are real. She's like, I know. I'm sorry. Me too. We'll talk about it afterwards. Oh my God. I'm so tired. I feel like my eyes are bleeding. Do you understand? It's fine, I'm okay, relax. Nobody needs to follow me home after the show, okay? It's mostly just I'm pissed. Cause I feel like nobody told me, all these parents here. Nobody wanted to give me a little nicky knocky. Hey, by the way, welcome to be exhausted forever. Okay? It's not just a newborn stage, it's like you're a parent now. Welcome to be exhausted forever. Them's the rules. I didn't make them, but somebody should have told me. But I get it now, you know what I mean? They wanted to, but they were too tired. You know? They saw me and they're like, yeah, fuck it, she'll figure it out. <laughs> and she did it. <laughs> oh, I do love being a mom. I really, really love it. It's as stereotypical as everybody says it's gonna be, right? All the memes you see on Instagram, all the little mommies, right? They're like, I love to put my kids to bed and then I lay in bed and look at pictures of them. <laughs> you know, you guys know, you've shared it. You've shared it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's not just me. Right? So I co-sign on that. That's real. I get it. But it's also another thing, other than being exhausted forever, that nobody tells you about becoming a parent is that <sighs> becoming a mother will really just make you realize how much you just loved not being a mother. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just fucking free time? Are you kidding me? There's just people out there just living their lives. They're getting lattes on a Tuesday because it was a good one, right? I don't know that life is what I'm saying. I don't know that life. But my husband and I are pretty good about making sure that each of us have time to be able to go out by ourselves and reconnect, right? Not even together, but just individually so we can remember who we were before we became parents and all the responsibilities, right? Which, I'm sorry, now I'm just bragging that I go to therapy. So. <laughs> oh, egg on my face, huh? Oh, jeez. How embarrassing. But, uh... So... I recently, it was my turn to take myself out. So mama took herself to a Reba McIntyre concert. Yeah! Oh, y'all, oh, Reba did me right. Oh, Reba did me right. She did. I'm just out there in the stands alone, and I'm just like, here's your one chance, fans, you know, let me down. Here's your one chance, fans, you know, let me down. Right? I'm just fist bumping other tired moms, right? I'm like, girl, I'm forever! That. It was fun. But it is interesting because I was a little nervous. I haven't been to a concert by myself in my late 30s. It's been a while. 
Uh, I'm happy to report that going to a concert in your late 30s, pretty much the exact same experience as going in your early 20s. <laughs> Except for going to the bathroom, okay? <laughs> because when you're in your early 20s and you go to the women's bathroom, there's a very high probability that you're gonna run in or meet your new bathroom bestie. Got a couple of yeahs, a couple of you know what I'm talking about, okay? Here's the deal, if you're not familiar, a bathroom bestie is just another drunk 20-something girl who you've never seen before. You'll never see again. Could be a ghost, right? And if this bathroom bestie sees you cry or hears you just talking about some dude, she will emerge just out of a sea of other drunk women, right? And just quickly approach like a siren from the Odyssey. And she's like, stop, look, look at me, listen. Okay, you're gorgeous, stop. Don't, no, look at you, you're gorgeous. Are you kidding me? Give me your phone, delete his number. Delete his number right now, give me your phone. Seriously, you are a new person. Dye your hair, okay? Burn off your fingerprints, here's a new passport. Your name is Lindsay now, okay? You are magic. And I love you. Some of you are realizing maybe you were the bathroom bestie. I got one, look at her, loud and proud. I love it, she's like, thank you. And you wanna know what? Thank you for your service. So many of us, you've nursed back to health. There should be a tax cut for that, you know what I mean? Do you know all the bathroom besties out there that saved my life? More than one, more than one. But then going to the bathroom in your late 30s is just other tired moms just FaceTiming their TikTok babysitter, right? And they're on there and they're like, Michaela, it's fine, it's just a rash. Cody can go to sleep. It's just a rash, Michaela, you can put them down, right? They're just defeated. So, and you know, a TikTok babysitter, I'm sure you're going, what's that? <laughs> Some of you here tonight may have one in your house right now and you don't even know. <laughs> right? She does, she's going, uh-huh, yeah, I got it. So a TikTok babysitter is just somebody that you've hired and after they put your children to sleep, now you're just paying them $20 an hour to make TikToks and you're upstairs half bath, okay? <laughs> You're just up there like, listen to Olivia Rodrigo, using your expensive moisturizer. So I check, I check. So I leave the bathroom and Reeve was playing and it just like hits me. And that sugar-free Red Bull does too because it's Tuesday night so I can't get too wild. And I'm standing there and I reconnect. And I reconnect to that part of myself that I don't get to see very often, and I don't get to feel. And in that moment, Rebo was like, put your hands in the air, right? So I did. And she's like, sway side to side. Now jump, jump, jump. Y'all, by the time my feet hit the ground, my pelvic floor loose. And what can only be described as a gush of pee just comes streaming down my legs. As though my responsibilities hurt me being at peace. And we're just like, never forget. <laughs> so postpartum is fun. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we talk about it enough. A lot of the things that happen to your body feel like a sci-fi movie, you know? We just don't talk about it enough. And my hormones have just been like ding a dong and They're all over the place. It's just like a meth head who works from home, right? They're just like sending invoices. They're making their own hours. They're being their own boss. <laughs> it's like, who's in charge? <laughs> so when I went for my postpartum visit and my doctor was like, well, you know, we could put you on birth control. That'll take care of some of that. You're like, mm, that's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Are you kidding? If you're not familiar, birth control is just a tiny pill that you can take 
and that will help you control your ovulation cycle while simultaneously losing all control of your mental and emotional stability. <laughs> really, birth control is just like the stock market for your hormones, right? The stock market for your hormones, because it's just like, we're up, we're down. <laughs> it's a world controlled by men. Yeah, I'm gonna let the clap roll in on that one. <laughs> let that shit roll in. I do though, there are a lot of really beautiful things about being in this phase of life and getting a little bit older, right? Like one of them is just like, I cannot be bothered. <laughs> I just don't give a shit about anybody else's opinions. I don't care. I don't care how other people think us as women should lead our lives, like so pedestrian and boring. Just like, boo, I don't care, you know? Although, although, wait for it. There is one and I'd like to talk about it and break it down. Okay, here we go. There's a phrase and this like idea that I hear a lot, right? A lot of times I'll hear that and people say that women are too emotional to be in positions of power. Yeah, okay, they're my friends. Women are too emotional to be in positions of power. And to that I would say, have you ever seen a group of men at a sporting event? <laughs> are you kidding me? Women are the ones that are too emotional? Just groups of grown men, shirtless, drunk, painted, toe to head, toe to head. He had to go somewhere and get that paint. You know what I mean? There was multiple steps before he showed up in the game. Right? And they're just yelling at other groups of dudes who are also shirtless and drunk, painted head to toe, head to toe, right? Because their team, a group of men that they've never met, lost to another team of men that they've never met. I feel like that's a lot of high emotion for some pretty fucking low stakes, so. I even dated a guy once, this is absolutely real. He broke up with me, this was, he said, I'm sorry, I think you're too emotional for me. Which would be fine, we're not for everybody. If not, he hadn't two weeks before canceled his own birthday party because he was too sad that the Patriots lost. <laughs> She dodged a bullet, okay? That's, that's what happened. Oh. And even, it doesn't even have to be professional sports to elicit such high emotion from men, right? I was at my niece's peewee soccer match. Lee, baby girls, little girls, baby girls playing peewee soccer, okay? And I saw a dad punch out another dad at a girl's peewee soccer match. Friends, in America, we don't even consider soccer a real sport. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that emotion isn't about the game. And frankly, emotions are powerful. That's the whole fucking point, right? <laughs> to feel your emotions is letting you know like, oh, I'm getting a little out of my bounds, or oh, I'm starting to feel this way. Maybe I'm passionate about this thing. We're supposed to have them, okay? So that's why I think that we should have more emotional women in positions of power, because emotional women get shit done. <laughs> All of a sudden, I just like announced my presidency. I'm like, I'm running for president. It's like, the show was wild. But it's true, right? Emotional women get shit done. Like, have you ever seen an angry woman at a TJ Maxx? <laughs> right? She is returning those towels without a receipt. You know what I mean? Those are negotiation skills, friends. We need that, put her on the Senate floor. She's gonna push those bills through. 
I've got another friend, uh, she's a sugar baby. If you're not familiar, that's typically when someone younger spends emotional uh, and intimate time with somebody older, a la a sugar mama, a sugar daddy, right? In exchange for intimacy, you get sugar, right? Like money and gifts and things like that. So one of my other girlfriends was just gossiping and she called me and she's like, oh my God, Rachel. <laughs> it's like so disgusting that she does that. <laughs> it's so disgusting. I was like, really, is it? <laughs> because you're working two full-time jobs and still can't pay rent, okay? <laughs> that sugar baby is brilliant! Put her on the budget crisis, are you kidding me? Inflation, not with these sugar babies. The economy's never been better. And in the world, there's a lot of heavy politics happening, right? And it can be really scary. And frankly, if it's 3 a.m. in the Situation Room, and it comes down to one person and one buddy. I don't need a tempered man. I need a woman named Candace. She's a mother of four. She hasn't slept since 2013. She's got a weird haircut and she asked to speak to the manager at a Chick-fil-A in the drive-thru, okay? Tired moms for 2024. It is an election year and shit is gonna get wild. You're gonna see a lot of high emotion. And so I just wanna say that when you start to feel that high emotion, as we go through the year, I just want you to remember what I'm about to say right now, okay? Hot take, I don't think, I don't think we're so divided, okay? I think we just, we learn too much about each other. <laughs> we learn too much about each other. We were never supposed to know what every single person we've ever met has ever thought ever about anything? It's too much! It's too much! There is no reason why I should know that my seventh grade science teacher identifies as a Hufflepuff and also a flat earther. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I would have been fine not knowing that shit. I would have been fine. Right? There's just too many of us. That's all. We can't be kumbaya. There's too many of us. If at any other point in history, you even wanted to just, I don't know, see another family, you had to wake your family up at dawn, right? Grab your husband, Jebediah, and your four daughters named Sarah. Right? You guys all just like get into a covered wagon and just do this. Just shake around for eight hours in a little thing made of wood. Right? Until you get to somebody else's house. By the time you get there, it's dark outside, so now guess what? You're sleeping over, right? You're not gonna ask them their feelings on the world. You're not gonna ask them their opinions. No, because you wanted to like them. You needed to like them. There was nobody else around. It is a luxury to not fucking like people, right? It's a luxury. Friends, there are almost 11 million people in Georgia alone. And I can't think of seven people that I respect. <laughs> and why would we be on the same page? Why would we be on the same page? There are the most simple things, friends, that we have gotten completely different books on how it's supposed to go, right? We're not even gonna go gender as a spectrum. We're gonna go real binary. We're gonna go men and women, right? So this is what happens. You probably don't even notice it, and this is exactly what happens. We, if a woman shows any heightened emotion at all, what do we call her? Crazy, Crazy bitch, right? Well, maybe both of those together, depending on where you are, right? She didn't move her car. Fucking crazy bitch, right? <laughs> crazy. We call her crazy. There's probably some dude in the parking lot right now been like, dude, she wanted to like get off my nuts, dude. She's fucking crazy. <laughs> right? Meanwhile, she's probably like, hey, I was just checking in on you and your mom. Did everything go okay in the surgery? Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> she's on my nuts. <laughs> And then conversely, and I know I've been hard on my dudes tonight, but here's the thing. We've done you a major disservice, and I really mean that. And it's not fair, right? Because if men show any emotion at all, 
What do we call him? Pussy! Pussy. Fucking gay! Fucking gay pussy! Right? It's ridiculous! Or worse, we use your biology against you and we tell you what? Man up! Right? So now, we tell women that they're crazy, we call men pussies, and then we're all just shocked that dating is difficult. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, and frankly, also, it doesn't even work, because, like, pussies and the gays, incredibly fierce, okay? So, incorrect, incorrect, right? Anybody, anybody dating here right now? Anybody dating tonight? We're not on a date, but everybody's taken in here? What the fuck? Okay, I got my single ladies. What? We see her. We see her. She probably feels traumatized now. That's okay. The whole table is going, it's her! Right? Here, I'm here for you, mama. And here's why, right? Check on your single friends. Wellness check, okay? I may be tired. Those bitches are exhausted. Right? Because when you start to get, like, you're getting in your early 30s, if you're thinking about having kids, you feel like that biological clock, everybody's asking if you're going to have kids, right? It basically it just feels like playing Tetris, right? And that clock is running out. You're so close to winning and you just need one. You just need that long piece, right? But everything else is coming in. You're like, where's the long piece? Where's the long piece? Where's the long piece? Where's the long piece? That's all dating is. We're all just looking for our long piece. Now, I don't want you guys to, listen, I don't want you guys to be intimidated, okay, by this just beacon of emotional and spiritual stability that you see before you, okay? I, too, have served my time in the trenches, okay? Even though I, it wasn't that long ago, and I remember dating, and it feels like when you're dating, it starts to feel like you're collecting data, like you're some sort of, like, anthropologist or something, right? We're all covering different sectors of, you know, men and women and so on and so forth, right? For me, I found myself, I dated a lot of Tylers. <laughs> Sounds like some of you have too. And yeah, I dated a lot of Tylers. If you're not familiar, uh, Tylers pretty much, as I've collected my data again, uh, Tylers, you know, they really, they don't like top sheets. <laughs> okay. They love Madden. And there's always this thing that all of them would say, and they'd be like, babe, condoms are uncomfortable. Really? Condoms are uncomfortable, Tyler. <laughs> Let me give you another scenario of something that also might be uncomfortable. <laughs> okay? It's just me dropping off our kids to you in an Arby's parking lot on Christmas morning because it didn't work out. Put a condom on Tyler. <laughs> you know, I really don't want to be braggadocious right now. You guys all seem like good people. You guys seem like good people, but I would be remiss to not tell you that I am so good at procrastinating <laughs> that I once moved in with somebody that I was supposed to break up with. <laughs> so... I was, uh, this guy and I, we were living together. Um, we were in a relationship, I thought, and... <laughs> you guys like to laugh at pain, and... There was this phrase that he would say a lot in our house, and this phrase was, um, I don't want to get married, right? I don't want to get married, right? What did you guys hear me say? Ooh, good listening, good communication skills. Um, because I heard, we'll see. <laughs> not to ruin the ending, that's not who I married. <laughs> right? And that's what happens. Because we're not listening to each other. And again, your emotions are so powerful. They're there, they want to connect you, they want to get you to where you want to go, right? So you're not like me when I was out there dating and I just... I wanted everything to work even if it wasn't for me, right? I'm just out there just... 
in the relationship when I just feel like I'm trying to land a plane like fucking Denzel Washington at the end of a movie. Right? And there's like taking red flags to the face that like, this is love! Right? You've met my dad! I've shown you my credit score! I've licked your butt! You know, intimacy. <laughs> oh, man. So grateful to be out of that. I, uh, I've been married four years this year. Yeah. Yeah, it feels really good. I'm, I'm, we're in a very healthy relationship. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. And, uh, but back deep in the core, you guys remember those days? Remember 20, you remember, 2020, I don't know, maybe you blocked it out, right? And it was like right after we'd all done the puzzles and then we did like the sourdough starters. And we'd run out of things to do. And so my husband looked at me and he's like, babe, tonight I would love to show you my favorite horror movie. <laughs> yeah, no, all I could think is, fucking gay, <laughs> right? That's fucking gay, bro. <laughs> That's fucking gay. But then I just heard Colleen in my head and... Sorry, Colleen is my therapist. <laughs> so, she lives up there rent-free. <laughs> just kidding, she's expensive. <laughs> A lot of money to keep this ship afloat. And I just hear her say, Colleen, and she's like, listen, let him emotionally lead, okay? Let him emotionally lead. I'm like, yeah, you said a little gay too, Colleen. <laughs> But then I take a second and I'm like, dude, I am so lucky, right? I made it through all those Tylers. I made it through that brutal relationship. Like I'm here. And so I was like, all right, honey, I, I really want to watch this horror movie with you. Any horror buffs in here tonight? Yeah. Okay, see, you guys are my people. Even an audible, no, <laughs> not for me. All right, close your ears. You're not gonna like this one. Okay, so he's like, I want to show you my favorite horror movie, okay? So he showed me The Strangers. Now, if you've never seen it, okay, couple of fans. You guys were holding back on me earlier. Here is the whole plot to the movie, okay? So it's Scott Speedman and Liv Tyler, all right? He proposes to her, she's on the fence. He's like, hey, let's go to a cabin in the woods and work this shit out, right? And then three strangers show up and just put weird bags over their head and then torture them to death. That's it, that's the movie, you're caught up, okay? <laughs> So we watched this movie in its entirety. He's just sitting there with a little blanket on his knees, like just like a little millennial FDR, right? <laughs> it's been enough time, it's okay, I can say that. Since I took my favorite precedent, okay. So he's just sitting there and then the movie turns off and he just, you know, he, he beeps it off and then he looks at me and he goes, <laughs> So what was your favorite part? <laughs> and like, I don't know, it being over? <laughs> and then again, I look at him and I could tell he was just so excited to share it. I'm like, I'm sorry, honey. It just was really scary for me. But like, what was your favorite part? And he goes, well, I don't know if I had a favorite part. Well, uh, definitely the scariest part. And then he goes on to explain this scene, but I'm gonna explain to you right now, okay? <laughs> So it's Liv Tyler and she's washing dishes and behind her is just this big opening, right? There's a hallway. So she can't see behind her, but somebody can see her. So she's there and she's washing, you're already scared. Yeah, see? It's fucking scary. And she's there and she's washing dishes and she knows that something's off, but she doesn't know what it is. And just then, the stranger shows up behind her and he stands. And he stares at her. And then he just leaves! It's so scary. It's so terrifying. And I will never forget this. My husband looked me dead in the eye. And he goes, And that was the scariest part. Because he was marking her like prey. And she 
didn't even know he was there. And it was in that moment that I realized that my husband's greatest fear is just being a woman. Because that shit happens all the time, everywhere. You guys, that's it for me. I'm Rachel Morris. Tell you this, 30 minutes of improv is a lot less stress.